Hello and welcome. Thank you very much for joining me today on this presentation, which is the first of a series of lectures that we're going to have throughout this course, in which we'll look at the SAP Logistics Execution with Warehouse Management module. I believe that throughout this course, we'll be able to touch on the essential topics that will enable anyone who's interested in logistics execution to gain a more than basic understanding of the entire module. So first of all, we'll start by looking at a basic overview of the entire module. In this course, we're going to answer the basic questions, what is logistics execution, so on and so forth. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope that throughout the length of this course, you'll gain a more than basic understanding and appreciation of this powerful SAP module. Okay, so firstly, we're going to look at the structure of this lecture. This presentation is going to be split into three parts. And firstly, we're going to look at what exactly SAP logistics execution is. And on this part of the presentation, we're going to go over a few definitions. We're going to work on building a basic understanding of what logistics execution is, what to expect from it, and what exactly we can draw from this particular SAP solution. And secondly, we're going to look at the organizational units uh, used in logistics execution. We're going to look at the overall concept of organizational units, why we have them in the first place, and then we're going to look at what organizational units are involved in logistics execution. Lastly, of course, we're going to look at master data relevant to logistics execution, and we're going to see where exactly this master data is maintained, how exactly it's used, and once we're done with this, that's the end of the first lecture, and we can proceed to build on this and develop our knowledge further. Okay, so what exactly is SAP Logistics Execution? First of all, it is a very important component of SAP ECC, uh, better known as SAP ERP Central Component. We're going to look at that in detail in the next slide where we'll look at where exactly uh, SAP ECC sits in the overall solution offering that we get from SAP. Secondly, SAP Logistics Execution handles warehouse management, shipping, and transportation functionalities. Um, we're also going to take a brief look in following slides at how Logistics Execution sits in the overall logistics uh, set of modules, how it handles the processes uh, that are associated with warehouse management, shipping, and transportation. And finally, SAP Logistics Execution integrates tightly with other SAP Logistics components. Well, it's fair to say that SAP Logistics Execution cannot really uh, function on its own, but it really borrows or rather supports processes from other key uh, logistics modules, which we'll look at briefly as well in slides to follow. So just so that we can better place uh, SAP Logistics Execution. We need to look at it as a member or as a component of the overall suite of solutions that SAP has provided. So first of all, and at the four, at the top, we have SAP Business Suite, which is a solution package for multiple industries. It uh, has components such as supplier relationship management, uh, customer relationship management, and ERP. So SAP Business Suite is 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 a comp it's 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 a, a suite of applications that can either be used with each other or even with third party systems. It's a very broad set of solutions, and one of those solutions or or pack or components of SAP Business Suite is SAP ERP. Now SAP ERP basically contains um, reports and analyses. It has components such as human capital management, accounting, and logistics. It's based on the SAP NetWeaver's application platform. So what we get is a, a very broad set of components in SAP ERP, but still we're not talking about any actual packages that we can literally install. Now SAP Enterprise Central Component is the actual set of installable applications applications like materials management, sales and distribution, financials, production planning, these are actual installable applications that an enterprise can use. So SAP ERP is broad, but it does not refer to actual installable applications. But with ECC, 
we have the actual applications that you could actually install so that's the basic difference between sap erp and sap ecc so logistics execution then falls under sap enterprise central component now with respect to the process scope of logistics execution you will realize that uh, logistics execution handles goods receipts and goods issues but it's important to note that logistics execution does not stand on its own as a module but it supports processes that are often initiated by other supporting modules such as materials management sales and distribution or warehouse management so logistics execution won't stand on its own but it's often viewed as a bridge between goods receipts and goods issues processes as a bridge between procurement and distribution okay now we'll take a quick look at the organizational units that we use in SAP LE now first of all the important thing to understand is that organizational units basically enable your SAP system to appreciate the structure of your business on the ground you map your business you structure your business in the SAP system in a specific way given these organizational units that will enable the system to have a very good understanding of how your business stands on the ground for example you can map departments you can map um, different organizational structures that your organization has in the system so organizational units in SAP don't only get the system to appreciate the structure of a business an actual business but they also form the basis of process control they enable the system to actually carry out processes within the system the exact way that they will be carried out in the actual business so in logistics execution we have three critical or three um, very important mandatory organizational units that will be at work and each of them enables a specific functionality within the system meaning that if any one of them is left out there is a chunk of processes a set of processes that would not be able to function so namely first of all we have the warehouse number which apparently is also the highest organizational unit in warehouse management we're not going to go down because warehouse management also has its own structure but we're not going to go deep into that right now maybe in the next lecture we'll take a deep look at it but for now as an overview we'll just and that uh, the warehouse number basically represents a warehouse complex or building and in warehouse management it has its sub elements it has its structure it has units that fall underneath it which we will look at uh, in, 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 in courses to in, in courses to come secondly we have the shipment point the shipping point which maps the actual location at which uh, it makes the actual location or the actual group of people for example that are handling uh, shipping activities for an organization so it could be either a group of people that are in charge of shipping it could be a physical location where shipping is handled so the shipping point is basically a pointer it maps a location of where the actual shipping is occurring that's what the shipping point is it's more than a, a, um, more than one of these can be defined depending on the requirement that a organization has multiple shipping points can be defined for example if an organization has different places or different depots that process shipments you can have multiple shipping points representing each of these separate depots and uh, finally we also have the transportation planning point and uh, this is mandatory if transportation planning will be used it's uh it's, it also is very similar to the shipping point maps the location at which shipping occurs it can be a group of people it can be a physical location it can be an office but its its function is to map the point or the location at which transportation planning will be carried out from now anyone who has used an sap system um, maybe as an end user or any consultant SAP consultant would know the relevance of master data but generally speaking master data generally refers to the records 
that are kept within the SAP system, which the system will refer to when processing different transactions. Now, these records can be material master records. Material master records can be, for example, product information, the dimensions of particular products, the prices. Um, we can talk about the vendors that supply particular products. This can all be maintained under material master. So whenever you're processing a particular transaction, the system constantly refers to your material master record and draws information from that. So it prevents you from having to continuously or repeatedly enter information for every single transaction. You, for example, would only have to pick a particular material, enter a particular material into a quotation, and the system will be able to determine the price, determine when the material will be available, determine who supplies the material, and so on and so forth. So basically, master data enables the system, master data feeds the system with information that it uses as it processes different transactions. So for logistics execution, there are two particular um, categories or types of master data that the system will require, namely material master and customer master. And with material master, well, maybe anyone who's used a material or created material master in the system before in SAP will know that multiple views are involved. And as you create uh, particular materials, you maintain different views depending on the characteristics of that material. So two of the views that are used when creating material master data in the SAP system are warehouse management one and warehouse management two. But let's not go too deep in that. Uh, we don't want to lose anyone too early. We'll probably be able to explain these in detail in presentations to come. Secondly, logistics execution also relies on customer master data. Um, customer master data uh, is basically a customer record that we uh, create in the system and uh, the system uses this record to process different transactions that are customer related. Uh, it's split into three categories which is uh, company code data which generally refers to accounting data, we, we, we talk about bank accounts, uh, general ledgers, and posting information. And uh, the second uh, split is sales area data, which is sales-related information. Uh, it talks about any information that relates to sales, basically. And finally, it also Customer Master also incorporates general data, which is data that is general. Uh, we talk about address, uh, telephone, website, uh, email address and different types of information that is very general to the customer. And so in summary, we could say that logistics execution is part of a larger suite of integrating components. It acts as a bridge between procurement and distribution, and it supports the processes of other key modules in logistics. It does not stand alone, it supports processes from other modules, and it is a bridge between procurement and distribution. Well, thank you very much for joining us in this first uh, presentation in this series. And in the next presentation, we will be looking at goods receipt processes, uh, the creation of transfer orders for put-away and setting up of put-away strategies. This is going to be a very uh, challenging but very informative lecture, and I advise you to be geared to learn as much as possible. Thank you very much, and we'll be looking forward to having you join us for the next presentation.